Closed captioning is brought to you in part by Raven Reads. Unbox Indigenous Voices. Subscribe today at ravenreads.org. Business Insight Fredericton. I'm Krista Ross, CEO of the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce. Today we're visiting Surface Float and as you can see I'm right next to one of their awesome pods. Kat, tell me a little bit about your business. So Surface Float is a wellness center where we offer various uh, modalities. We offer massage therapy, infrared sauna, yoga, reiki, but our hero service is the flotation therapy. So that is where you go into a specialized room that has a float tank that is designed to leave out all external stimulation. So we're talking, um, you can have it dark, you can have no sound, or you can play calming, relaxing music during the session. But the point of it is that you are in a about 10, 11 inches of water that's saturated with Epsom salt. And so that makes you 100% buoyant and you just let your body chill. But that is kind of the gist of what floating is and why we wanted to bring it to our city is because there isn't anywhere else in Fredericton that you can go float. It goes so well with the massage and the sauna and just helping people come and take time for themselves, take time for their self care. Flotation therapy is also referred to as sensory deprivation therapy restricted environmental stimulation therapy, but now we call it floating. So tell me why people should float. So there is a lot of different reasons why people would benefit from floating. The biggest one is that we have a lot of stress in our lives. We are busy, we have you know, a long to-do list of things to do, people expect us to be at places, we have you know, calendars to manage, schedules to manage. And we very rarely take time to do nothing. And doing nothing helps you relax. So when you do that, you come here, you have nothing else to do, you block time for yourself, and it can really, really help with the emotional stress, the mental stress, but also physically, the Epsom salt is really good for your body. Would you say floating is for everyone, or are there people that don't benefit from floating? Well, for sure there are contraindications that, you know, you would want to be careful of, but I'm, you know, it just depends on the person and we try to give people a really good heads up by going to our website and reading the FAQ sections to see if anything, you know, pops out at them that applies to them. The biggest ones are, you know, if your doctor has told you that you shouldn't be exposed to magnesium because Epsom salt is magnesium. Okay. Uh, the second one is if you have really severe vertigo or really intense motion sickness, because as you can imagine, when you're floating on the surface, it can mimic that slight rocking sensation. And another one is something that a lot of people don't consider is that in that deep state of relaxation, your body can sometimes finally have time to trigger healing processes within. Tell me, Kat, how did the business actually get started? It all had to do with me and how sick I got. I used to work as a birth doula, so I was on call 24-7. I was a very busy doula, and I burnt out big time. I was super stressed, super tired, had anxiety. I, had, I was on, like, you know, a couple different medications to manage like the stress and anxiety in my life. And the final kind of drop in the bucket was that I got diagnosed with an autoimmune condition in 2017. And I realized that stress was probably my main trigger. So mm -hmm. I started to look for ways to reduce stress in my life and to manage the stress. So I tried floating. I wanted to do it on a regular basis, but there was nowhere close to me that offered it and I didn't want to have to drive, you know, an hour or two to go do it on a regular basis. So I always had it in my five to ten year plan of uh, being like a, you know, self-employed person. I wanted to have a wellness center. Amazing. So how long have you been in the business? When did you actually start it? So we started planning the float center in the summer of 2019 and it all kind of like fell really well, like just one thing rolled so easily to the next. 
and the date that we were supposed to open was March 2020. <laughs> so even though the global pandemic prevented us from opening at the time that we were supposed to open, it was almost like a hidden blessing because we had been so busy leading up to that point, setting everything up, getting the float tanks all you know, functional, and we hadn't had time to work out the flow. So if we had opened when we were scheduled to open, it would have been really intense. It would have, there would have been a lot of little kinks that we had, would have to work out. And we worked out some of those kinks so that when we finally did open, it flowed way more smoothly. So tell me about the structure of your business. Um, are you the sole owner? Do you have a group of employees? The people that do massage and so on, are they employees or are they self-employed? How does that all work? Uh, I am the sole owner. It's not a franchise. I, this is just my baby, but I have an amazing team. So yes, we have, right now we have uh, eight employees mm -hmm. and probably over the next few months we'll hire a couple more because the winter is our busy time. So we find that we you know, need a few extra hands and we do have massage therapy as well. They are employees. Describe to me your main clientele. Who is that person? So that's interesting. We've looked at our demographics you know, over the last two years quite a bit because we want to know, like, you know, who's coming, who are we targeting with our advertising and that kind of thing. It's people who I think are already open to the possibility of, you know, alternative modalities. We have a lot of people that come who have been referred by chiropractors, physiotherapists, other massage therapists, who they know are, they're dealing with pain, they're dealing with chronic conditions that they, the massage or, or the physio or the chiro is just, it's helping, but they want them to be able to get something more out of it. My clinician suggested that I sh should try it to help with um, a lot of my physical pain mm -hmm. that I'm in from. That's pretty much how I came. So you were told that it would help with physical pain. Now tell me how that has worked for you. I come in uh, every two weeks, okay. uh, pretty much like clockwork. Um, at the beginning and then the spring, summer's coming, want to be outdoors more, so I made the decision to cut myself back to, to uh, one float a month. Uh, that lasted one month. And I missed it so much that I had to come back in and I've been all summer long, twice a, twice a month. Um, I can't really tell you how it's worked for me except that it's been a delight. Wonderful. Basically, I heard it was supposed to help relieve stress, so I wanted to give it a try. So did you find that it did help relieve stress? It did. Initially, the first time I came, I found it, I thought I'd be zen and meditative, but my brain was going a mile a minute and I was thinking about so many different things. So it wasn't super relaxing the first time, but my body felt really relaxed when I was done. So that made me want to get a membership and come back. So tell me about that. How often do you come? I try to come at least once a month. During the summer, I did take some time off and I wasn't making time for it or not making it a priority. And so I've been coming once a week for the past couple of weeks, but I do find when I come once a month, that's a really good time for me. Mm -hmm. So you have tried the Dream Pods. Yes. Um, tell me about that. I know I've heard people say, oh, I feel claustrophobic, but tell me about that. I'm not usually a very claustrophobic person to begin with. And I did like though the first time I got in, I found out you didn't actually have to close the door the whole way if you didn't want to. And you can also keep lights on when you're in there. And it's pretty spacious. I can sit up in it and when I'm actually floating laying down, my feet and my hands aren't touching the sides because there's quite a bit of room in there. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like it's super claustrophobic. So how do you get your message out? We try to have a lot of community kind of reach um, by connecting with local clinics. And uh, yeah, so that, that did help. And then of course, with COVID happening and everything kind of shutting down, it did put a hamper on the, that ability to kind of like cross refer because a lot of places had to close or, or they were, you know, like their schedule had to go down to only partial availability. So we're starting to feel that momentum happening again. And the, just me being in, in, involved in the community as a doula from prior, my prior work, 
I already knew a lot of these practitioners, so it was kind of like an easy connection to, mm -hmm. to do that. But we also do uh, social media and we have a radio ad and word of mouth is actually probably our biggest uh, way to get the word out. There is yeah. no better referral than somebody who has used your product or service yeah. and then tells their friends about it. Sports Corn TV on Rogers TV. I'm Chris Dobson. And I'm Jerry Green. I'm here, he's there, but we put a show together every week about sports, local, provincial, national, international. We have opinions and we express them every week. You couldn't keep us apart just because we're not at the rink. We're able to do this thanks to the power of technology. Best part is we're doing it without pants. Without pants, Sport Corn TV on Rogers TV. So, this organ, which I regret I cannot name, because of the presence of these members of the weaker sex, who, although they are married, could not possibly endure... <laughs> Get them out. This is Ginny. Patience. Get them out! Dr. McFarlane! Mrs. Trout. There's no place for women in a medical school. Yeah. Yeah. Get them out! You do not bring this classroom under control. I am going to repeat every word of this disgusting lecture to your charming wife. My friend Jenny Trout was not the only woman to face this kind of thing in medical school. But she would become the first woman <laughs> licensed to practice medicine in Canada. About your growth trajectory what are your expectations for growth in the coming year that's a really good question if we don't have to shut down again <laughs> I think it's gonna be awesome like it did take a good year and a half for there to be a regular you know clientele coming in like our building our membership up to a stable number having those people recurring and having those people tell their friends about it all that stuff so what I envision is there's, let me backtrack a little bit, there's a move and a push in the states right now to do a lot more research, to fund um, new projects, uh, to determine with you know, clinical trials that floating is very beneficial to people, especially if they have anxiety and chronic pain uh, and, or, and other mood disorders. There's a crazy uh, number of people that are passionate about this that are so saddened and so um, kind of just fired up with the op opioid crisis and mm -hmm. the benzodiazepine crisis that's happening in, in, our, in North America and other parts of the world. So floats have been shown to, float therapy has been shown to be as beneficial as medication in these circumstances and there's lots of studies that wow. you know you can look up to you know to read those numbers and and the uh, findings of those studies so if we can offer people something that is not going to be harmful to them that's not going to cause them to become dependent and addicted to these medications and they, they, that they can't overdose on there's no withdrawal symptoms when you you know stop taking your medication uh, a lot of people end up tragically committing suicide during withdrawal because it's just so awful. And if we can have an impact on that, then, you know, the world, like, will benefit and people will benefit all over the world. World. So I see it becoming more and more, right now it's becoming a little bit more mainstream, but definitely it's still a little fringe because mm -hmm. especially in Eastern Canada, a lot of people still haven't heard about what what floating is and ha what it's like and and how you do it mm -hmm. so it's still uh, something that they're hesitant about so I see us uh, being able to get the word out more mm -hmm. and with the other modalities that we offer here as well um, I think that's going to bring in some some more interest as well so what is your expectation that at some point health plans might cover floating well, the hope is that eventually it will happen. Right now, we don't have a time frame. We, as an industry, it's a big unknown. 
but there is a lot of research being done and a lot of push toward getting that funding to happen. Mm -hmm. So if I was to make a guess, I would say maybe in the next five years, but okay. maybe that's hopeful thinking. Well, hopefully. I think a lot of companies and organizations now have health spending accounts and probably mm -hmm. floating might work for some of those uh, non-traditional funding buckets that aren't specific health plans. So maybe that time is coming. Yes, I hope so. Kat, what would you say is the biggest success you've experienced in the business so far? I think just being able to open during a global pandemic was a big win mm -hmm. because not only did we kind of overcome that hurdle and still maintained a pretty busy schedule, but we opened in a city that primarily had no idea what floating was. And so I think that is our biggest win, just being able to get through that mm -hmm. and still be open today. Kat, have you had any failures so far in the business? Of course. I think being an entrepreneur is, is you sign up to have fails. <laughs> um, probably, I think the biggest challenge uh, was when we started hiring people and just figuring out how to make it kind of work to, and how to make the people work together. I think that has been our, our biggest challenge. So we went through a few people, we went through a few employees uh, that didn't work out and it just helped me grow, it helped me become a better leader and that, you know, it's a learning opportunity. So I see failure as a, a learning opportunity. That's sure. great. You talked about um, finding the right people for your team and somebody told me once you should hire for the soul and train for the role. That's a good one. I like that. I definitely have learned how to be more in tune with kind of listening to your intuition because I feel that you do get a vibe when you meet people. Absolutely. And when you let your mind kind of talk you out of it is when you look back later and go, oh, I had warning signs. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Tell me about organizations that have helped you in the launch and in, in those first years of business. So our favorite, obviously, is the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> it helped open up, you know, just resources and helped me learn what was available. So I would say that's definitely our top oh, one. That's great to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're very grateful for that because mm -hmm. it also, you know, you plan events and uh, sessions that, you know, have been online or in person that people can attend to you know, learn skills or, or just networking has, mm -hmm. it's also really important as well. Tell me about your, your professional team that you have around you. Have you been able to identify and get help from, you know, a team of accountants, lawyers, bankers, all those types of people? Have, has that been of help to you? Oh, absolutely. I would never even attempt to do my own taxes. <laughs> so yeah, we definitely have great accountants and we have needed lawyers, like a lawyer, for mm -hmm. a few things over the last couple of years, for sure. We're incorporated, so that was a big thing to, to get started as well. And we've had some little hiccups with, uh, you know, drawing up contracts and things like that mm -hmm. to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So I always get the lawyer to do that instead mm -hmm. of trying to do that myself. I find when you try to take on too much, you know, you get stressed. So mm -hmm. I delegate those out to the professionals. That's great. Is being an entrepreneur what you expected it to be? No, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. It's, it's more awesome than I thought it would be, Good. but also the challenges are not things that you would have anticipated. Mm -hmm. it, everyone always makes it sound like, go run your own business, you know, be free and, you know, free yourself from the nine to five. Well, then you sign up for 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah. So in that regard, it's definitely different, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I've always been uh, quirky and different. I was a good employee, but not the best. <laughs> <laughs> so being on my own, doing my own thing and having the ability to do things in my style and attract the people that drive with me as well that are part of my team has been amazing and I love it. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. So what about the economy here in New Brunswick? Do you have optimism? For sure. I love New Brunswick and I think, I'm not from here, I've just been living here for 12 years I guess, like, it definitely feels like home now. But uh, I've definitely seen such a big shift, even in the last five to six years, of, of more things being available and you know new businesses, 
things that you that weren't here when I moved here and now they are here. So yes, I'm optimistic and I think that the more you know that people are discovering how awesome New Brunswick is, it's bringing people from other places into our city and making it even more diverse. So I, I definitely see huge growth coming in the next few years for sure. So when I think about your business, it is um, you know health related. Do you have regulatory um, rules and regulations that you need to follow that would be unique for your business? Yes, definitely unique to the business, but they don't come, these regulations don't come from the province. So we follow the Float Tank Association, which is an international um, organization that has put out regulations for safety running a float center. So this goes from water maintenance to safety, uh, re like recommendations, things that you need to have as an example, like grab bars in the room and mm -hmm. things like that. Also sanitation and disinfectation, disinfecting protocols. So we follow those guidelines and they're really strict. So we want to make sure that people come here and they feel safe. They know that we are doing the absolute, you know, gold standard in making sure that our float tanks are safe. When an impaired driver killed my brother DJ, some people used the A word. They called it an accident, but it wasn't. An accident implies that no one was at fault. But when someone impaired by alcohol and or drugs chooses to drive, they're fully responsible for the crash that can result. So please, for the memory of my brother DJ and the thousands of families whose lives have been shattered by impaired drivers, let's drop the A word. A crash caused by impaired driving is not an accident. You might be able to go vertical on that. I am pretty much there. Yeah, yeah. There's a hole, just the screen is just a little that. Oh my goodness gracious, there's a picture taking fish. That's a picture taking fish right there. Nice. When you got kids and you're taking them out and they're just learning how to fish and they can have a day where they catch those little schoolies all day long. I mean, you can't, you can't wipe the grin off their face by the time they get home, they're tired. I think he's over the slot. He probably is. As the fighting continues in Ukraine, thousands of people are fleeing for their lives, forced to leave everything behind. You can help them. Your donation to the Humanitarian Coalition will provide food, water, shelter, and medical care to the people of Ukraine who urgently need it. Call 1-855-461-2154 or donate online today at together.ca. That's together.ca. The Humanitarian Coalition. Together, saving more lives. Welcome back to Business Insight Fredericton. I'm Krista Ross, CEO of the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce. Next, we're going to learn even more about Surface Float. Since you started your business, what would you say is the best advice you've received? Oh wow, I've gotten so much good advice. I think the best advice is practice what you preach. Okay. <laughs> Which is true, right? Like if I wasn't floating myself and taking care of myself the same way that we tell our clients to take care of ourselves, I feel there would definitely be that, you know, disconnect and maybe our approach to things would not feel authentic. So our team that, you know, we're here daily working, talking to people, we all love floating. We float ourselves uh, at least once a week, sometimes mm -hmm. more, and we, yeah, we do what, what we know works. So your business is quite unique. Have you been able to find someone to be a mentor to you in this business? And are they from the float side of things or a business mentor? So I have received mentorship from a few different places that I value so much. The biggest one is that I did an apprenticeship in, um, in the United States. They have a program there where you can go and be in a float center, see exactly how it's run, learn all the things about what you need to do, how you need to set things up. They go over even the construction wow. and structuring schedules. So that was invaluable. It was so good. And I felt even though it was this new business that was like very overwhelming, I knew what I needed to do. I had that, that foundation and it allowed us to build a float center that actually is going to give people a good float. Mm -hmm. So if you could change anything about what you've done here, would there be anything you'd change? I 
I don't know. I don't think so. I think it would. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> I I've thought about that before. You know, would we have set up the rooms a little differently? Maybe, maybe. But I think we we were because we had that foundation of having done that program. We felt that it it suited and it fit all the the main and big important parts. Kat, tell me about your plans for the next year or three years or even five years. Well, that is a big exciting question that I have uh, thought of a little bit and um, some components have thought about a lot. So our biggest plan right now is to expand our services here in our location here. We are bringing in some exciting new modalities. One of them is red light therapy, which there's nowhere in New Brunswick that you can do that as far as I know. Um, it helps with inflammation, chronic pain, anti-aging benefits, uh, tissue healing, there's so many benefits. So that's a new thing that we're bringing in. And we want to make a salt therapy room. I don't know if you've ever heard of that before. I have not. So Tell basically me. it's a room that has ceiling to floor uh, Himalayan pink salt panels and bricks and it's like spending time a few hours at the ocean breathing breathing in the healing soothing you know ocean air in a shorter period of time so it provides people with rejuvenating benefits people just feel really relaxed and calm mm -hmm. when they do that so it's kind of like a very cool different thing for people to do instead of you know going in the and meditating at home or whatever they can come and meditate in the salt room so we're looking at doing that and we want to have a couple more massage therapists join the team as well so that's for here and the thought of expanding and opening other locations is also kind of in the works of course that takes a lot more planning and a lot more uh, consideration but it is something that i'm definitely open to and we have had people ask us if we are going to be you know moving into different locations so it's something that's in the works, but I have just coming out of COVID and just getting our business here started, we need to kind of get back into the momentum of things and, and then move forward. It sounds like the future is bright and I really yeah. appreciate your time today. This was so interesting, thank you. Thank you, it's, it was fun. We're always looking for great companies with a unique story to feature on the show. If you have suggestions, please get in touch with us. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. My uncle Cheney was one of over 150,000 Indigenous children that were taken to residential schools between the 1800s and 1996. My uncle ran away from school wanting to get home to his mom and dad and sadly he didn't make it and died of exposure. When Gord Downey found out about my late Uncle Cheney's story, he wrote Secret Path, a series of poems that became an album, then a graphic novel, a documentary, and a concert. Gord met my family, and together we formed the Gord Downey and Cheney Winjack Fund. Together we are sharing Secret Path and other reconciliation resources with legacy schools, setting up legacy spaces across Canada, and hosting events like Secret Path Week to inspire all Canadians to engage in reconciliation action. Before he left us, Gord asked us all to do something. You're going to figure it out. Will you join us? Together we can make Canada a better place. You're watching Rogers TV. Sometimes, for a wish to come true, it takes a kingdom because together we're stronger. Tied tight, united we stand in honor of one child's wish to fuel the fire that will grant many more.